I'm back. I know it's been a while. I apologize for the hiatus, but you know how it goes. You do something so much and things just happen. You get in the slump. You get in a rut. You take a step back. You know, you take your time to recompose yourself. And here we are again. So, try to do these a little bit more frequently. See what I can do about getting back on track again. As you've noticed, the articles have been coming every single day. And uh, we're going to see if we get some videos coming out to you uh, pretty regularly as well. So, the person to bring me out of retirement is none other than our favorite moron, Andrew, over at Retrievo. For those of you who are new, what you don't know is that Retrievo is a blog about technology. But it's a company. They also sell things and they've got deals and I'm not really sure what they do that's worthwhile besides provide fodder for me because everything they say is pretty much categorically patently untrue. So today we've got a few things here. Andrew tells us, Andrew by the way is the king of bad information over at Retrieval. You should go back in time and look at some of the things that I've said about Andrew before. I don't see eye to eye with this guy. You know, after I read this to you, you'll understand where I'm coming from, but you know what this guy did? He deleted my comment today. That's how much of a baby he is. Can't handle a little criticism. So, with no further ado, let's go ahead and look into what Dopey has to say about why you should jailbreak your iPad. Oh, one more thing. None of the reasons he gives are specific to the new iPad, even though the title says reasons to jailbreak your new iPad. Not one of them is specific to the new iPad. Anyway, now we can get going. First thing he says is you can turn your iPad into a hotspot. You know, what we've learned is that these new devices, they function as Wi-Fi hotspots. Basically, what I mean is the 3G or 4G radio in your iPad, or even your iPhone for that matter, brings in that cellular signal, and then it pumps out a Wi-Fi signal to all your other devices. So basically, you don't have to pay for a data plan for your iPad and your iPhone and whatever else you have that is Wi-Fi enabled. Right? You just very simply have one, and then it feeds out to everything else. Now, if we jailbreak, we can use an application called MyWi. It's not available on unjailbroken iOS devices. There is a very specific particular reason for that. What our buddy Andrew fails to tell us is what's going to happen if you use this. He gives us the good part. He says that you can tether to your device, and that's just the act of using one signal to another device. You're going to be using the new 4G LTE connection on your iPad to tether your laptop to the internet or provide other Wi-Fi users with internet access. He says you might be better off with Verizon because Verizon allows iPad users to create Wi-Fi hotspots for no additional charge. Whereas AT&T, you can do it but you need to have a tethering plan, which is, in fact, more money. Now, let's look at what's going to happen to you if you do this in either one of them. We are consuming data at an alarming rate more than ever, ever, ever before. Okay? We know this. This is why AT&T, no longer limited. Verizon, no longer limited. They are bringing in the data levels, bringing them down, because we can't stop surfing. Now, if you do this, you're going to be taking data off of an iPhone and a laptop and everything via this limited plan on your iPad. Do you think that AT&T or Verizon is not going to see you trucking along every month at this level, this level, this level, and you jailbreak, use my way, your data is way the hell up here. They're not going to look at that and say, wait a minute. These usage patterns are very unusual. They are. They're going to know. And you're violating your terms with them. But you're in a contract with them. A contract that says that you will abide by those terms of service. You're violating them. Here is a technology editor, a blogger in the technology space, telling you to do things that he knows full well will violate the terms of a contract. You don't know that? He doesn't tell you that. Is he going to pay the bill when you get a hit with surcharges? Is he going to pay the bill when you get hit with a termination fee for violating? and they throw you the hell out? No, he's not. Ignore him. Reason number one. A fast way to change your settings. I will admit that SB Settings is a cool little app that you get when you jailbreak, and you can swipe and you bring down like a little window shade, kind of like what iOS 5 offers now. But what's included in that window shade, much, much cooler. Data off and on, 3G off and on, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, all off and on very quickly. SSH, SSH access. 
if you're into that sort of thing. The brightness, you can kill processes, you can change the dock, there's all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Is it worth jailbreaking over? I mean, he, in his very first paragraph, he does go ahead and he tells you that jailbreaking an Apple device like an iPhone or iPad is not approved by Apple. Is this worth it? How often does Wi-Fi go off and on? 3G go off and on? Not very often in most people's cases, almost never in my case, really no need for that. Next one, activator gesture, activator controls gesture commands. If you've ever wanted to modify what different gestures do on your iPad, this app available for jailbroken iPads might just be the thing for you. Here's the thing, there are tons of gestures on your iPad that you probably don't know about already, as it is. Uh, you can do four finger swipes between apps without going double clicking on your home button. <clears throat> There's, uh, back to your home screen is what, a pinch maybe? Uh, there's a whole bunch of them, they're a little bit hidden, dig through your settings, you can find them. Uh, again, doing an unapproved thing just to get this. Customize your iPads look with Winterboard. Back in the day when we couldn't have customized backgrounds on our iPhones or our iPads, back when I couldn't have little things like this, like my little Pac-Man. See Pac-Man? He's eating the dots in between my icons. You, you were not able to do that back in the day, iOS 1, 2, and 3, I want to say. Maybe that came in 4. 4 sounds about right. Anyway, before that, you couldn't do it. We used Winterboard. Predecessor to that was something called Summerboard. It was pretty cool. We could make fancy apps, uh, icons and things, and backgrounds. Now you can do all that. This basically gives you the ability to change icons. Apple has met us 75% of the way on that. Big deal. Better app management. This is pretty stupid. Uh, there are some popular apps on the jailbroken Apple devices that help manage apps. One that overcomes the limitation of 12 apps per folder called Folder Enhancer. Yes, I've got a ton of apps. I have a ton of folders. Right now, I have 286 different applications on my phone. And as I scroll through, you can see lots and lots of folders. Folder after folder after folder. There's a ton of them. Uh, yes, you can only put 12 apps per folder. Beyond that, we end up where you're full and you got to make more than one. I have 286 apps. I find everything no problem. Truthfully, I don't use my folders at all. I go over this way and I search for whatever it is I'm looking for right here. You can do the same thing without that. App management gives you a couple things. You get a lot of apps in the Cydia library. That's C-Y-D-I-A, Cydia. And it's the app repository for things that are not approved by Apple. Now, 97%, 95, 95. 95% of all apps are approved within seven days of submission. The other 5% are not to say they're not approved at all, they're not approved within seven days. Maybe they're more complex to take more time, maybe they're sent back to the developer to redo some things, just kind of fine tune, tweak some things. Maybe they're not approved at all simply because that developer is using broken or illegal or hidden APIs, things that Apple says you can't do. We're back into that violating terms thing. The way you violate terms when you use too much data, these people are violating terms by doing things that Apple says no. So maybe that's why. There are some apps in that repository, but with 700, I read that right, 700,000 apps available for iOS out there, are you really trying to tell me you can't find something that'll suit your needs? in an approved kind of way. And forget the approval process, forget what's acceptable. Let's look at quality standpoint, okay? Everybody talks about Apple ruling with an iron fist and I'm pretty sure I've spoken to you about this before. The difference here is that this is quality control. There's a reason why I reboot this phone every so, never, because I don't have to. It works, everything is standard, everything is approved, everything is looked into for quality and ability, memory leaks, battery drain, etc., and so forth that I don't need to. I can write an app, put it up on the city of boards, and you know what it's gonna do? It's gonna make a fart noise, and it's gonna tell you that you're stupid for jailbreaking your phone, and then it's gonna crash. Nobody's checking. Kinda like Google. So, what else does Andrew tell us? Other media formats, including Flash. Let me tell you, Flash was not forgotten about. It was left out, very, very specifically, back in the day when Steve Jobs was still around and he was still healthy and was still able to get angry about people like Adobe, he would tell us that Flash is old, it's a drain on battery, it's full of security and vulnerabilities, there's a reason why it's left out, it's been around for a very, very long time, 
and it's fading very quickly, slowly at first, more quickly with each passing day. It's being replaced by HTML5. Who cares about Flash? So you can't watch cartoons, you can't play some games. Again, 700,000 apps on the App Store. Pretty sure you can find more games than you can choke down in an afternoon without having Flash. A fun desktop look. It's called Barrel. It's $2.99 on the City Store and lets you add a cool 3D look to the screen transitions as well as changing the look of other screens. Well, I can't really speak to that because Mr. Specific over here said other cool screens. No idea what that means. But it's three bucks after you do something you're not supposed to do in the first place. Run FaceTime over a wireless connection. I think what he means here is a cellular connection, but the tech blogger doesn't know what he's talking about. So, I will define that for you. Right now, FaceTime only runs over Wi-Fi, whereas using jailbroken systems, you can now have FaceTime over 3G or 4G. That's more convenient because you have to FaceTime while you're in Walmart. You have to. It's important because I can't just call somebody and say, what'd you tell me to pick up again? Chances are, if you are FaceTiming, sitting down, having a visual conversation, you're someplace that has Wi-Fi, either in the privacy of your own home or you're annoying me someplace public like Starbucks or McDonald's. However, using it over Wi-Fi, over 3G or 4G, depending on where you're at, it may be convenient to you, but it's not going to be convenient every 30 days when you get that bill. Audio video uses more data than text. We know this. Big chunks. If we miss one little piece of data when an email comes in, it doesn't really matter. It's not constant. It's not a stream. There's no quality of service involved. I'm not going to get super technical. But anybody that's made a video call or watched something, everybody's watched a YouTube video, and you see what happens when we catch up and data's not moving fast enough. And the little red bar of what we're watching catches up to the little gray bar of what's called buffering. Then you're, it gets like... Uh, uh, it looks a little bit like a robot, like a retarded robot at that, actually, right? Right. So, we don't want to do that because it requires a lot of data, lots of bandwidth, huge numbers in consumption. And what does that equate to? Well, with limited plans, big bucks, lots of money, because you go over and you end up spending cash. So we don't really want to do that either. Jailbreaking, what does it do for you? Not a whole lot. I will admit, my iPhone, original one, my iPhone 3G, and even my iPhone 3GS were all jailbroken. They were. We're talking about 2007, 2008, and 2009. We are currently in 2012. So, Apple has bridged that gap. The jailbroken community serves one major purpose. It helps us know what we're getting in the next official release. Because Apple spends all year looking at what the people who are circumventing the system are doing and what they're trying to get, where the thousands of people are going with jailbroken stuff, and they incorporate that. Nine times out of ten, they hand us what we've been looking for. So whatever you don't have, you mostly don't have yet. What Andrew also doesn't tell us, and which may possibly be the most dangerous part of this article, is that he doesn't tell you how to do it. I wonder why. But he figures if he doesn't give you the way, then he's credible. So if I tell you how to kill somebody, or tell you that you should kill somebody, but don't tell you how to do it, that makes me a good influence, right? wrong -o. So, he doesn't tell you how to do it. There's a reason for that. You're not supposed to be doing it. The biggest thing, the biggest problem here with this is there are lots of dangerous ways to do it where you can turn your iPhone into a paperweight or your iPad into a boat anchor or a doorstop. It's not really heavy enough to anchor a boat down. Although, the three, the new iPad, ooh, I said three. Ooh, I'm sorry. I'll kick my own ass later for that. It's not the three. It is the new iPad. My apologies. In any event, the reason why there are dangerous ways to do this. That's where I was going with that. There are places that are copycat. They take some pieces of legitimate jailbreaking places. Imagine that, legitimate jailbreaking places. Whatever. Places that are known good, known to work properly. And they take that, but they don't take all of it because they're stealing from the stealers. And we end up with a problem. We end up with a half jailbroken iPad or half jailbroken iPhone or an improperly jailbroken one or the other, and it doesn't quite work right. Sometimes it can be screwed up so badly, you can't even restore it to factory defaults. This is a major, major problem. So realistically, what he should be doing is saying, I don't condone this nonsense, but if you're going to do it, here's how to do it safely. I don't condone 14-year-olds having sex, but you know what? They're going to do it. Might as well give them condoms and let them be safe about it. That's a political debate, not for this channel. Keep your comments to yourselves. It's an analogy. That being said, 
there are ways to do it. I'm not going to tell you either because I don't condone it. I'm not going to tell you how to do it. If you really, really want to know how to do it and you can do something stupid and something dangerous and ruin a very terrific device, email me. I will tell you privately, off to the side. If you're going to do it anyway, maybe I can help you do it safely. But I'm not going to post it publicly because I'm not giving you guys any ideas. Dopey's taking care of that for me. Anyway, super long, super sorry. It's been a while since I've been here for you. Coming back, a little bit rusty on the whole brevity thing. So, we'll get better at that. We'll see you more frequently. Hopefully, we won't have to hear from him again, although I've said that in the past, and yet here we are again. So, do not jailbreak. It's just not worth it. I promise. I would not lie to you. I love you too much. Okay? Stay tuned. I'll be back. This was fun. I'll be back.